Hey, my name is Matt Johnson, and if you want to buy an Apple laptop for 4K video editing, in this video I have three recommendations for you at three different price points. We're going to cover a budget option, a best bang for your buck option, and an extremely powerful beastly option that will handle anything you throw at it. Sound cool? Okay, to save you time, I've linked down in the video description to the three laptops that I recommend because I respect your time like that. Now, let's get started with the budget-friendly option. Typically in the past, the words budget and Apple don't really go together, but that's all changed with the advent of their M1 Apple Silicon chips. So if you want a powerful video editing laptop that is not going to break the bank, I'm actually going to recommend that you purchase the M1 MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Yes, this is literally the cheapest laptop that Apple makes with an M1 chip, and with that RAM upgrade, it comes out to 1200 bucks. But trust me, this laptop is fantastic for video editing, even if you're editing 4K video. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, really Matt, the MacBook Air? You're telling me that I shouldn't even upgrade the GPU to eight cores or consider the 13 inch MacBook Pro? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. And here's why. With the M1 MacBook Air model, you're already getting 95% of the performance that you need from the M1 chip. And those upgrades to the GPU or to the 13 inch MacBook Pro are gonna be very negligible at best because every M1 chip already has two of the most important features for video editors. These two features are a hardware encoder and decoder for the H.264 and H.265 video formats in 8-bit and 10-bit, meaning that this laptop can play back and render the video files filmed by many cameras today significantly faster than anything from Intel or AMD. And these encoders and decoders come with the base CPU and GPU in the M1. Heck, the only reason that I'm recommending you upgrade the RAM is if you're a heavy multitasker and you want some future proofing. But if you're really on a budget, stick with the $999 8 gig model though. It should still work well as long as you don't have a ton of programs open. Now, Here's the other reason that I don't think you should spend a lot on upgrades for the MacBook Air, and that ties into the second MacBook that we need to talk about, which is the best bang for your buck MacBook. The best bang for your buck video editing MacBook that I recommend for you is the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M1 Pro CPU, which comes in at roughly $2,000. Remember that the budget MacBook Air that I recommended is $1,200. But if you start spending money on upgrades for the Air, like the 8-core GPU and an upgraded SSD, you're sitting at $1450. Or if you switch to the MacBook Pro 13-inch, you're spending $1700 for a similar system. Here's the issue. Every dollar that you spend on an upgrade over the $1,200 MacBook Air is getting you closer and closer to the $2,000 price of the 14-inch MacBook Pro. And this is a problem because the 14-inch MacBook Pro is such a dramatic and significant upgrade over the MacBook Air and really most other laptops for that matter. There very quickly comes a tipping point where if you want to spend more than $1,200 or so on a MacBook Air, it's really gonna become smarter to just save up your money so you can afford the 14 inch MacBook Pro at 2000. Okay, so what makes this 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook so good and the best bang for your buck? Well, for this 1999, you are getting a laptop that is going to run circles around Apple's previous most expensive Intel laptops that cost well over $4,000. Compared to the MacBook Air, you get a bigger and better mini LED screen with 120 Hertz refresh rate more ports, MagSafe, super fast SSD, a ton of great stuff. But most importantly for video editing, remember how the M1 chip on the MacBook Air has dedicated hardware video encoders and decoders for H.264 and H.265? Well, of course the M1 Pro has these too, but in addition, it also includes hardware encoders and decoders for the ProRes video codec too, which is one of the most popular codecs today. And when you combine these hardware encoders and decoders, with the incredibly fast M1 Pro CPU and GPU, it's frankly insane. And your editing is going to be orders of magnitude faster. And let me remind you, you're getting all this performance with the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the base M1 Pro chip. So, 
If you want the best bang for your buck, my recommendation is to buy the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro with the 8-core CPU and 14-core GPU. I don't think that the upgrade to the 10-core CPU or 16-core GPU is really worth it for video editing. You are not going to see a huge increase in the hardware encoder and decoder speed whenever you spend more money on those upgrades. For memory, I would stick with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Because this is unified memory that is shared between the CPU and GPU, and this laptop is just so optimized, this amount of RAM is going to be significantly more efficient than regular memory that you may be used to. And even if you're a heavy multitasker, I don't think you're going to see any major difference if you switch from 16 to 32 gigabytes of memory. So. I would save your money. For storage though, this is one area where I would consider upgrading. I would choose one terabyte if you have the money because extra space is always a good thing. Lastly, if you choose this base model, you're going to notice that by default it comes with a 67 watt power adapter. I would highly recommend upgrading the power adapter for $20 to the 96 watt adapter as this is going to give you access to fast charging, which as the name implies will charge your laptop much faster. Congratulations, you've now spent anywhere from 2000 to 2220 at most, and you now have a laptop that is going to blow your mind, hopefully without completely destroying your wallet. But we're not done yet. We have one more laptop to talk about, and this laptop is an absolute beast that is going to give you a crazy amount of power. So if you edit 6K, 8K, 12K, or raw video, which to be clear, the cheaper 14 inch MacBook with the M1 Pro can handle, but if you want to edit in that resolution and quality of footage as fast as possible, and you have a larger budget, this final laptop is the laptop that I would recommend for you. First, I know you're probably thinking, Matt, this is easy. If I want the best laptop, I just go to Apple's website and max out the machine for approximately 6,000 bucks, right? Well, no actually, and you can actually think of this third laptop as another best bang for your buck option that's going to give you even more power while not getting anywhere close to the maxed out price for this laptop. All right, for option number three, I'm going to recommend you upgrade to the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Yes, we're finally going up in size, and this is also the point where I'm going to recommend you upgrade to the M1 Max processor, specifically the option with the 10-core CPU and 24-core GPU. This is the entry-level M1 Max model, and it has one significant change over the M1 Pro that's going to make a huge difference for video editing. We got to talk hardware encoders and decoders again, but don't worry, I promise you this is the last time. Remember how I said that the M1 Pro has dedicated hardware video encoders and decoders for H.264, H.265, and ProRes video formats that make the editing and rendering super fast? Well, the M1 Max takes everything to another level because it includes two of them. Yes, you get twice as many hardware encoders and decoders with this chip, which is going to skyrocket your editing and rendering speed even over the already blazing fast M1 Pro. In addition, because you are choosing the 16-inch model of MacBook Pro, you are also going to deal with less throttling of the CPU than if you chose to put the M1 Max into the 14-inch chassis. I want to give a huge thank you to Max Yuriev over at Max Tech for discovering the difference between these two laptop bodies. His videos about these laptops are awesome. I highly recommend checking them out, and I'll link to his channel down below. Now that we've covered the CPU, let's talk memory. By default, if you select the M1 Max, Apple's going to require you to also select 32 gigabytes of RAM, and I think that this is plenty. Remember, this is a unified memory that is shared between the CPU and GPU, and even if you're heavily multitasking, you should be fine for video editing even higher resolution footage, so I would save your 400 bucks and not upgrade to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Lastly, for storage, this is definitely an area where I would consider upgrading to at least one terabyte, if not two, depending on your budget. Remember, if you're editing 6K, 8K, or RAW files, having some extra space on your hard drive to store those files is always nice. So here's where I would spend some extra money if you have it. With that, you are now looking at an absolute beast of a laptop that's capable of editing pretty much any resolution or format of footage that you want to throw at it for $3,300. And there you have it, 
three Apple laptops that I recommend at three different price points. Regardless of your budget, you should be able to find an option that works well for you. But if I had to pick, the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the base M1 Pro is such a killer option for that price and definitely the best bang for your buck. Lastly, I will link to all of these laptops down below if you want to check them out. It would also be a huge help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you want to see more videos about video editing and filmmaking in the future. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.